All right, hello everyone. I'm David Maldo. I'm here with BC Strategies Group, and I have the group. Um, they're here. They're off camera, but they're my class today because we're going to be discussing OBS. Anyone who's ever been in a Zoom meeting with me or a Microsoft Teams meeting with me, or hopefully has uh, seen some of my content on YouTube, know that I do a lot of things with video that go beyond the, the normal virtual backgrounds. And to do that, I use a software called OBS. And um, it's not the most user-friendly thing. It's very powerful. There, there are other uh, softwares out there that, that people use that are simpler. Um, I recommend them. They're great. But my friends in BC Strategy said, we want to see what you're doing, David. Show us this OBS thing. So that's what we're here today to do. And um, I'm going to try to keep this session. We might have another session because I think this is going to be fun. But we're going to try to keep the session top level. I want you to understand conceptually how I use it where it, it sits in between my web camera and, and my screen share and my Zoom and my YouTube, where, where it works, and, and basically how it functions. I don't want to get too deep into the, the weeds and the technical stuff. There'll be a few things. I'm going to try to keep it simple. So we go to, um, you know, one technical thing is you have to download it. So uh, just take, don't do it now, but obsproject.com is, is where you go. And, and I'm going to get myself out of the way. And by the way, this is the kind of thing I use OBS to do. Normally, if I was going to do a presentation without OBS, I would be sharing screen. And where would I go? You know, I feel like I'm less effective. So now I can be here in front of what I'm sharing with you. This is one of the things I love OBS for. And oh, but I'm big and in the way. Okay, I can make myself smaller and move myself to one side or make myself small and move myself to the other side. I have all sorts of tricks. Um, the motion, that's a plugin. We're not doing plugins today. So we're going to have simple transitions. We're going to fade in and out. We're not going to move around. But, but you get the idea. This is a, a much more effective way to present. So download Windows, Mac, whatever you have. Install it. Um, and it just installs like any other, any other program. I'm just going to go through the installation process like, quickly. Okay, should pop up now. I did things right. Okay, um, and let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So when you first download it, it's going to ask you if you want to optimize it for streaming, um, optimize for recording, or if you're just using the virtual camera. You don't really have to worry about this stuff. We're going we're gonna to fix the settings later. You could actually just click X and, and go past it. Uh, I'm just going to go through some of it to show you some of some of the settings. But again, this is kind of the, the nitty gritty stuff that I want to do at the end of the session. Uh, but let's say I'm optimizing it for streaming. It's just there's no difference between streaming and recording. It just does more settings. So uh, your resolution, 1920 by 1080. That's easy. I'll just pick that for everything. Um, FPS, it's giving me a choice of 60 or 30 or 61 possible. I want to keep things easy on my machine. I'm going 30. I think my camera can handle 60, my machine can handle 60. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing video games. I'm not doing art or whatever. I'm, I'm just a talking head. So 30 is fine. And actually 720p is fine. If you're worried about, you know, oh, my machine's not that powerful. A lot of my YouTube videos, I just put them in 720p. Uh, so then if I click next, now it's asking for my stream information. This is where we connect it to YouTube or connect it to Twitch or, 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 or restream if we want to do both at the same time. I want to save this to the end. This is the tricky stuff. I want to I want to start with the basics. So let's just X out of here. And let me show you. Let me unzoom. Let me max maximize this here. This is o is OBS. And there's a few sections. I call them docs. The reason I call them docs is because you can move them. I could put put it here if I want. I could move. I want to keep it. Where, I'm going to keep everything at the default for now. But you could move these docs around and you could add docs. Um, in my production setup, over on this part of the screen, I have a doc for YouTube chat. So I don't have to have another window open. In OBS, I see people chatting in, in YouTube if I'm streaming live. So, so I call these docs. And I, I want to just start with the basic principles. I don't want to get into... Um, the last doc I want to go into is the one that I'm blocking, which are these controls. But there's one I have to do right now. I just have to do this to start in the settings. We're going to do this last. This is the nitty gritty stuff. This is where we set up 
under stream is, and it's okay if it's small, it's too small to see because we're not really doing it now. Under the stream tab is where we set it up to go to YouTube. Uh, the output tab is we set up the size and the resolution. The video tab, we set up our video codecs, which this group will, will be a little bit uh, more comfortable with than a lot of groups. All I want to do right now, um, this drop down is the theme. I don't like the new theme, this, this new default theme, I don't like it. The old theme is called dark. This is so not important, but it's just going to throw me off if we don't do that right now. So I'm doing that right now. Um, there's other settings here. I think we can go into them later. Actually, one I'm going to do right now because it's important. Show confirmation dialogue, dialogue when starting stream. <laughs> I'm always worried I'm going to click the start stream button by accident and go live and I'll be sitting here, you know, th with a stupid look on my face. So I just, let me just click that one. Let me zoom in so you can see it. Show confirmation dialogue when starting stream. That one I do. Okay. Now let's get out of the settings. And what I want you to understand is, is what's going on here. The most important area is this big black box at the top. That's our stage. I think of it in, in terms of our, if you're a theater person, think of it in terms of your stage. If you're not a theater person, come up with some other analogy. But that, that is our stage. That's where all the action happens. And whatever we see there, this is where we're going to build everything. Whatever we see there, that's what people see when they're, when we're in Zoom with them or when we're streaming on YouTube or whatever we're going out to, it's what's in this box. And actually the way you're seeing me now, I'm running, I'm actually running two, two OBSs. There's a trick to run, we're not going to get into it, but there's a trick to run two OBSs. So in another OBS on another window somewhere, what you're seeing is, is in that preview screen. Can you, um, so that screen is different from the one that you're showing yourself in. So you have another stage and, and that stage is kind of embedded in your stage. Yeah, I, I'm doing an OBS within an OBS. I don't want to confuse everyone with that, but that's that's the trick that I'm using to do this presentation. Um, everything you're seeing here from this top corner where my mouse is wiggling to, to here, oh, actually, even if I get rid of this, let's make it simpler. Everything you're seeing now, this whole blue window is in what, what we'll call OBS one. That's my main OBS that's pushing out to zoom where you are. And, and what you're seeing here, this is OBS two that I'm using to teach with. Thank you. Okay, so so um, I'm going to move stuff off to the other side because the two boxes that I want are they're the most important. The two docs are these two: scenes and sources. Audio we'll deal with later. Transitions we'll deal with later. The settings we'll deal with later. Scenes and sources are where the magic happens. And right now we have one starting scene, and if I zoom in, you'll see it's called um, scene. <laughs> Um, but let's change that to, to let's change the name of that. That's going to be our main scene. Let's rename that, and let's call that main office. That's going to be our main office scene. And again, to use a theater analogy, I want you to think of these. We're going to have multiple scenes um, as scenes in a play. Y you want to kind of do everything you're doing in one scene, and then close the curtains and go to another scene. We actually can do a transition to close the curtains, but we're just going to have a fade. You're going to fade to another scene. And I have multiple scenes, and each scene is another place. So when if you've seen me on Zoom and you see me go to my library, that's another scene. If you see me um, um, go to my billboard scene, that's another scene. So great, we have our main office scene. That's wonderful. And I can even make another scene. I can click here, uh, the plus, or, or right-click, and add. And we can call this, for now, second scene. And I can, um, you know, click between the two scenes, but that doesn't do me any good because there's nothing happening on, on our main area because there's no sources. The sources live within a scene. We're going to have sources in our main office scene and we're going to have different sources in our second scene. And the sources are everything you see in the scene. My webcam is a source. A PowerPoint is a source. Another screen, if I want to share a screen, is a source. Um, uh, an image is a source, a movie is a source. So this is where all the fun stuff lives. So um, everyone still with me? Any questions? We're good? Right on. Um, let's start with a sample source. Let me show you the list. Lots of different kinds of sources. Some of them I never use. I never use the audio stuff. I do the audio settings in the settings. Um, this new beta thing, I haven't used that. You're not gonna worry about that. Let's start with a simple one, browser. So a website. I can put a website in here. Let's do that. 
Um, I'm going to call it DC Strategies. Click OK. And I'm going to put in the URL. This is the, the settings box for the source that we just created. We have a new source. So um, DC Strategies.com. And I'm going to make it 1920 by 1080. And there's other things you could do in here. I, I don't want to go into too many details. I want to just get the basics. I'm going to click OK. And there we have it. Here is our, oh, let me, let me uh, unzoom so you can see better. Now we have, actually, let me zoom in so you can see this. In our main office scene, we have this one source which is the BC strategies. And in our second scene, if I click to it, we have nothing. So it fades away up here. I want to get it back. I go back to my first scene, which has this source. Now, before I show you some other, probably more important sources, this is a nice one to play around with. I want to show you some very basic things for, for playing around with things. You see these red lines and red squares. If you grab them, let me unzoom for a while. So I'm not moving around so much. You grab the, um, no, it's just freezing up. Go. Grab them, you can resize. And you grab it in the middle. I'm just left mouse clicking, moving around, just like a Photoshop or, or any other picture editing software. Um, you all know how to do this. This is very, very basic. Resize, move around. One trick, if there's one thing I would have you write down, um, the one, I don't want to give you a lot of uh, um, um, key binds and tricks and, and secrets, but this is just one thing that's really essential. If I hold down the alt button on my keyboard while I grab one of these corners, instead of resizing it crops, you see how it turns a, it's a green instead of a red? So if I don't hold alt, it resizes. If I hold alt, it crops. That's just the one. So if I wanted to get the crop, zoom in on the logo, I can crop it. Now let go of Alt and resize it. Probably better if I just get a high quality picture and use a picture, but you, you see what I did. I'm still on the website. This is the website. I just zoomed in on it. And you can do that with your webcam. You could do that with videos, anything else, anything that you can use as a source. You could do those three things. Move, resize, and uh, crop. So, actually, I'm just going to leave this here for now, and let's look at, oh, and two more things. There's, these, there's only, this is easy, there's only two buttons here. I'm going to zoom in. Next to our source here, there are these two buttons. One is an eyeball, and one is a lock. If I click a lock, let me zoom out again. Now I can't move it. Now I can't move it, I can't resize that, I can't mess it up by accident. Once you have your stuff where you want it, you want to lock it. And the eyeball is if you want to hide it for some reason. You want to hide it, you want to show it. I, I, just as a general best practice thing, theoretically, I can put every single source I have in this one scene and just light up and unlight the sources to change things around. That's hard to manage. I don't like to do things that way. I rarely, there's some occasions where it makes sense, but I rarely turn sources on and off once I have them set up. I set up my scenes and my scenes are on lockdown. And once I go live, whether I'm in a Zoom meeting or on YouTube, I just switch between scenes to make things happen. So let's look at some of our other sources. Let's just take a quick look at the list actually. So we have um, the browser source. A color source is literally just that. It makes a box that you can resize like I resize that, that's any color. Display capture, that's what I use to capture another window on my PC. So anything that's happening on my third monitor, if I grab my third monitor, I grab my friends in Zoom that I promised I wouldn't show, so I'm not going to do that now. Uh, game capture, don't worry about it. It's, it's a, a higher quality way of capturing a window for certain video games. Image is literally an image. You, you click it and you can upload an image. We'll do some of that in a minute. Uh, image slide shows, you upload a images at once it'll rotate them it's, it's kind of a way of doing a powerpoint within it uh, media source mp4s you put a video up there it plays the video it plays the audio and you have controls once it's in there so you can play it when you're ready to play it that's how i play videos behind me in my youtubes oh this uh, i'm not sure if i should go here scene 
you could put one scene within another scene. I call them nested scenes. It's a very, very powerful concept, but this is 101, so maybe we shouldn't go there. But uh, one example, what I, what I do in my main, um, my main setup, I have my webcam alone in its scene all by itself. I, and I have it called nested webcam. And then I have that scene in other scenes. So that way I can do different, that way if I, if I make a change to my webcam, it's reflected everywhere. You know, if I had my webcam alone in 30 different scenes and I made a change, I'd have to fix it in 30 different scenes. So I have a nested webcam and that goes into my other scenes. If you, if you didn't follow that, that's okay. That's kind of advanced and we'll, we'll get to that another time. Um, text is literally just text, but we will get to that. And, um, I don't use these other ones, but this, this is the key crucial one. This is the big one. Video capture device. This is your webcam. So let's do this one next. So I'm clicking it. Uh, I'm going to call it Logitech Brio because it is one. Um, you're welcome to our friends at Logitech. Uh, and click OK. Uh, under device. And, and again, any source, if, you, if, you, if I double click on the source, you get this little properties box. And it's different properties depending on what kind of source. It looks like a lot and most of it will be intuitive. You'll see it and you'll figure it out when you get to it. I don't want to explain what every single line does um, now because we don't have that much time, but you could figure it out device. Let's find my, I have way too many devices. Uh, here's my Logitech and there we go. Okay. Um, the, and you can see it's the wrong shape. So let's fix the resolution. Uh, custom resolution. 1080p, you like 1080p. There we go. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, you could lock down the FPS at 30. You could, some of the stuff, um, some of you not, might not understand more than me, these, this video format, I leave it all at defaults. Uh, one thing I will do though is, let me scroll back up here. This configure video button is a good one because I don't remember where my Logitech um, Brio settings software is it's somewhere in this computer but i can get to that stuff from here this little thing pops up this is great uh, what's not great is it doesn't always save the settings so you might have to do this every time but you could kind of default the zoom here um i'm never happy with the, the white balance look i look i look orange crazy Let's see if i can there we go not going to spend too much time playing with it but these controls are here and they're great to have this might be another you know, the one note was the alt button. This might be the second note is that configure button video in the properties for your video capture device. I wish they just called it webcam instead of video capture device, but I guess they're correct. Okay, so now um, I have my webcam and I can do the thing where let's go, let's do this. I'm gonna um, uh, put myself in the corner and let's get my, um, lock that down. And let's unlock BC strategies. Oh, by the way, I lied to you earlier. I told you everything in this black box. Let me unzoom. Un will be seen. The red lines is the one thing that doesn't get seen. If I was streaming this now, uh, anyone watching the stream, or if I was pushing this to zoom right now, they would see me in my little green box down here. They would see the BC strategies thing. They would not see the red lines. That's the one thing. So I'm going to um, uncrop this all the way. So that I can have my website behind me. And this, again, this could be a PowerPoint or whatever. Actually, let me do it with a PowerPoint. Hold on a second. Okay, so the way I do a PowerPoint is I put it up on a screen and I share that screen. So I'm going to zoom in again. I need to create another source. I'm, I'm doing this in my main office, which is not where I would do it. I would make a second, I would probably do this on my second scene and rename the second scene to PowerPoint scene. But we can, we can clean up that later. For now, let's just get it working. So I'm going to add either plus or, or right click add. And this time I want to add a um, display capture. Uh, I'm gonna be careful, I'm not gonna get the capture with my friends on it that I promised I wouldn't show. Um, and I'm gonna call this, um, you know, just display three. And when I click, okay, uh, again, I get my, um, it's, it's showing display one, which is why it's doing this crazy recursive thing. But if anything else, when you create a new source, you get your properties window. 
And this one gives me a choice of which monitor. I'm going to choose the, the correct one. There we go. Click OK. And this monitor, um, let me unzoom. Here's my PowerPoint. I have my PowerPoint. And I could just work it like I work a normal PowerPoint. I just, here we go. I'm pressing the right, the right button on my keyboard. Just like any other PowerPoint. Um, but you notice something's wrong. Where did I go? I'm not there anymore. Uh, there's a problem. The problem is, the way it works is... It's stacked up by the order that it's in here. And I have display 3 on top. So I didn't really disappear. I'm still there. I'm just hiding behind. There I am. I'm hiding behind it. So the way we get me up is... I grab my Logitech Brio and I just drag it to the top. Now we have our PowerPoint presentation. Um, and we can do a lot of things. We can let me lock these down so I don't move the wrong thing. You try, I try to only have one thing unlocked at a time, sort of the best practice. I can say I want to make myself bigger. I want to make myself smaller. I want to move myself to the right. I can set this up whenever, however I want. Oh, this is so nice. I'm going to... Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this as my um, PowerPoint because I'm I, I, I would just rename this now because this is such a nice setup. Um, let's do a quick advanced trick. You might be wondering, um, you know, usually I have the virtual background. What's with the green screen? There's two ways to do the transparent trick: one using the green screen, and one for all you who don't have a green screen, which I think is is all of you. Uh, so let me show you both of them now. This, we're about to get into filters. I don't want to get too heavy into filters. I feel like filters is an OBS 102 thing and we're OBS 101 here. Um, but let's, let's just do a little, just a little, little bit of filters. Um, you could put filters on any source. You could put filters on any scenes and filters do so many things. I can't, I can't begin to tell you what filters do. They do all sorts of tricks and, and weird things. But one thing they do is, is the chroma stuff. So I'm going to right click Logitech Brio. It gives you a lot of options, a lot of things you could do with a source. A lot of things you could do with a source. A lot of them I never, ever, ever, ever use. Uh, but one I use right at the bottom is filters. And this is um, another properties window. I'm going to add um, a filter. And because I have a green screen, I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to show you both ways. Chroma key. I could give it a name. I'm just going to call it chroma key. And I can adjust the settings, but you know what? The default, the default kind of did it. The default kind of did it. So um, let me un unzoom a little bit. So now it's weird. There's this two of me. I shouldn't. I shouldn't use a slide that has me in it. Hold on. There we go. So um, now I can clean things up a little bit here. My green screen doesn't cover all of my wall, so you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold the Alt button and crop that out. Oh, now we're getting clean. Now I could put myself here. I could put myself here. Um, I can make one scene. How about let's do this. Let's make one scene where I'm here. Because this is really how I actually do it in production. Okay. So we're going to rename this scene. We are going to do this. We're going to call this instead of main office. Um, I'm going to call it presentation right because I'm over at the right let me zoom in so you see that better presentation right now I'm gonna duplicate it there's a duplicate button which is awesome and we're gonna call this one presentation left now I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked on presentation left and I'm gonna take myself and move myself to the left and now here, this is what I was trying to explain before, but it makes so much more sense to show you. Let me, let me lock it to get rid of the ugly red lines. Okay, let me full size it. So now I'm giving my presentation. And because I have my stream deck set up with the, to set scenes and buttons and whatever so I could do it smoothly, I'm talking about how now I'm on the left and all of a sudden here I am on the right. Magic! Uh, that's the magic. And you see what I did is I clicked over here on the scenes. I clicked from presentation right to presentation left and because everything else in the scene is the same well everything else is just the display the only thing that's different 
between the two scenes is my location, it seems like I'm moving within the scene, even though we're really going from, from one scene to another. So let me show you how I, I create my office. Um, let's rename our second scene. I'm going to call this uh, main office again. I want to make my main office. Oh, I didn't show you the other way to make myself invisible. I'm sorry. Let me go back. Let's go back. I promised you I'd show you both ways to, to do this. So um, I'm using the green screen right now filter. Let me go back to my filters. Uh, it's on the Logitech Brio. Filters. Chroma key. I'm going to delete this. We're not using this at all. Okay. Now what we're going to use will work without a green screen, but you need an NVIDIA graphics card. NVIDIA background removal. Same effect. And, and this time, it, I don't have to crop out the, um, the part that's not a green screen because it doesn't care what's a green screen or not. So if, if I uncrop this, <laughs> this, is, this is even cleaner than using the green screen. Well, no, my hair looks a little weirder, but you get the idea. It's, it used to be green screen is 100 times better than not using green screen. This is pretty close. I'm satisfied. Like, it's almost not worth the expense to get a green screen. So that's how without a green screen, you make yourself invisible on top of something. So let's go back to our, our main office. Um, first thing I'm going to add again is me. So I go to um, add a source. If there's nothing in, in the scene. There's no, you know, there's nothing in the scene. So my first source is going to be, uh, again, video capture device. And now look, I don't have to recreate it. It's already in here. So I'm just going to add the existing Logitech Brio and use it again over here. And if I had multiple webcams, they would be in here. Let me just check on, hold on, I have the PowerPoint over Zoom, so I can see if everyone's still happy. Everyone's still happy in Zoom? We're good? Awesome. If you have any questions, please um, let me know. Oh, I'm not watching the chat. Check the chat. Oh, Blair was saying uh, she missed how I got the green Yeah, I think you kind of answered it, but... I just got that. Okay. We're good. Okay, so back to uh, my, my main office here. Unzoom again. Um, I got me, but I need an office. Now, there's two ways of, of adding stuff, images. The, the, the way I did before, if I wanted to add my office image, I can add source, image, call it office, and then it'll give me that pop-up window and I can browse to it. But an easier way is you can just drag it. So let me just... I have, I have ready to go here a little, a little folder of graphics that I, I created for this, uh, for this, for this course here. And let me drag over, where's my main office? Is it, oh, I forget which office. Oh, this one. Office background. If I drag it into the sources, it just makes it a source. So, so let's fix this up a little bit. Um, first of all, let's resize it. It's humongous. And you can stretch things so like, see how it's, it's, it's bigger than the thing? It's bigger than the, the, the canvas? That's okay. I could do this. And now again, where did David go? I'm under it. I need to be over it. Oops, I didn't mean to double click that. I just double clicked on the webcam property. So let me close that. Um, I just take myself and drag it up over. And here I am. I usually make myself a little bigger, I think. So again, I can... Like that I can make myself bigger than the window. And if any of you have ever talked to me on Zoom, th this is what you've seen. The only difference is I usually have my logo up here, which, oh, shoot, I, shoot, I don't have a copy of the logo. Um, but the way I would do it, I have something else I can put there. Let me see. Um, you know, the way I do it is I would just drag over a picture of my logo the way I dragged over the office background, but I would have it in front instead of behind. Oh, here it is. I do have it here. So I'm going to drag in, and I'm just dragging this in from that same folder, my logo. And, and I'm getting confused about the red lines, so I'm going to lock down everything except the logo. Okay, so these red lines are now for the logo. Move it around. And actually, I could leave it in front because it doesn't matter. I could, I could move it behind me or in front of me. If I, if I, if I, don't, like how, um, I don't like how it's behind my hand, I can do drag it down behind me. Now my, I, I like that better. My hand goes in front of it. Um, 
so, so now you're getting it. We've got um, my uh, our main setup, and I'm not going to switch to the presentation because it would show you guys now. I, I showed you, but let, let's do a couple more advanced tricks. This is a fun one. Everyone loved um, the Christmas frame I did. So let me show you how I did the Christmas frame. It's an MP4 video. So there's two ways to add it. I can, uh, just like everything else, add a new source. And this would be a media source. And then it would let me browse in my computer and find the file. But the easy way is I'm just going to drag it. And this is something um, I, I searched YouTube for free use, copyright free uh, overlays, Santa Claus overlays. That's how I find most of my stuff. Okay. So I drag it here. And um, actually, what time is it? We have time to... You know what? We have time. I'm going to show you the. I'm going to show you the quick way to do this. Then I'm going to show you the the cooler, better way to do it. Okay. So the quick way is, um, you could see that this the, the this bar here. It's it's just playing the video. Oh, let me let me un unzoom here. We're literally just playing a video. I'm not controlling when the Santa comes up. He's he's on a loop. Um, but again, you can't see me. I'm, you know, I'm behind it. So what do we do? We do our chroma key, same as we do with my green screen, but we do it to, instead of putting a filter on my Brio, I'm putting a filter on this Christmas frame video. So right click, filters, chroma key is the right filter. Other filters do cool things. We really, I don't think we should get into too many of them here. And again, there's all sorts of settings if it doesn't look quite right, but the, um, oh, where did I go? Hold on a second. I forgot one trick. Uh, let me. I'm double clicking, double left clicking the Christmas frame to bring up the properties. Let me zoom in. Oh. Loop. I want this video to loop, otherwise Santa goes away after a minute. I don't want Santa to go away. So sorry about that. Click loop. And now it's just looping. Oh, and because I put on the chroma, you could see me now behind. Now this is, this works. But the better way to do it, let me show you the better way, is to use nested scenes. So I'm going to um, turn off this. I'm going to make a new scene and I'm going to call it Santa. And I'm going to put two things in here. The first thing I'm putting in is um, that that Santa frame. And by the way, I should rename it. I don't like having sources called Xmas frame MP4. I'm going to rename it. That's what it called it because I dragged it in and it gave it the name of the actual file. We're just going to call it Christmas. I like that better. And I'm going to resize it to fit the whole thing. And remember I got all excited before about nested scenes, the magic of nested scenes. We're going to use the nested scene now. I'm going to add a scene and I'm adding the main office scene. So put it, kind of resize it here so it fits the box. That. And then put it behind to take advantage of the green screen effect. And now I'm fitting in here better. It's not that much of a difference, but it's a little bit of a difference. Now I'm kind of in the window. And now if I made other changes on my main scene, like let's say I um, go back to my main, I don't like the, I want to move the logo over. I'm switching now. Should I, should I zoom in here? Um, switching scenes back to my main office. And uh, unlocking the logo. Moving the logo over to the other side. It doesn't look good there, but just to show you what's going on here. Now if I go back to the Santa scene, the logo moved to this side because it's a scene within a scene. Um, let me see if there's any other other tricks. Um, this is the same kind of a thing, but it's another example. And I'm showing fun examples, but obviously with this with this crowd, I expect you to come up with business examples. You know, showing your customers products, showing PowerPoints, showing videos. Um, but it, it's it's more fun to teach with with fun things. So I'm going to show you one more thing, and then we we have some time. I'll show you I'll show you another scene, and then we'll do um, we'll t we'll take some questions, I guess. Um, this one I just love. This is my wings. So, okay, first thing obviously I need to do is the chroma. So I'm going to right click and filters. 
Same as I did with my green screen and with the uh, the Santa. I'm going to kind of position them make the right size here and put them behind me. I'm, I'm some sort of crazy vampire guy now. Um, and it ends if we switch to the Santa scene because that entire scene is nested within this scene. I still have my wings uh, in the Santa scene. Um, let me show. Let me show one other example. Let me show you my my library scene. I love my library scene. So I'm gonna make my, and, and this is an example to show a good way to use two different scenes. I'm gonna make a library and a library zoom. So I'm gonna drag in my library picture. There it is. And I'm going to add myself again. So um, video capture device is the source that I want to add. The existing one, my Brio. Multiple cameras, you could do things. Uh, let me lock the library so that it doesn't move around. So that I move my, I always move. If I, if I don't have everything locked except for one thing, I move the wrong thing. So everything's locked except for one thing. And let me make myself little and put myself uh, behind the desk here. And this is how I do my library scene. And then to do my library zoom, I do the nested scene again. So let me I make a new scene. Library zoom. And the only source that goes in here, I'm going to add it because you know, we have to have a source in every scene. Otherwise, there's nothing to look at is the library scene. So this is just the same exact thing. Now I have the, it, this is no different. If I switch back to library and switch back to zoom, can't tell what's going on. But in zoom, I'm going to resize the whole thing all at once. I don't have to separately resize myself. And, and I, I, I'm looking pixely because I didn't, there's better ways to do this, but you get the idea. So now when I switch between the scenes, it looks like, hello everyone, welcome to my library. Come on in. Ah, here you are. Um, that's how you, know, you get the idea. That's how I, that's how I use my scenes and use nested scenes to, to do different views of, of, of a scene. Um, oh, I almost forgot the most important part. I really should have, should have done this at the beginning. How do, now that we have a feel for, um, um, you, you know, have a feel for, for, for what's, I'm going to turn off the wings. This I look silly. Um, how do we get what's in our preview window out to the world? I should have started with this. So let's look at our control panel here, or here, actually, little me, little me can show you. Um, this button is awesome. Start virtual camera. This this didn't used to exist in in OBS. It was a plugin, and it was the most popular plugin. And it was such a popular plugin that um, uh, that it became a feature. And what happens if I click this? Well, you won't see anything if I click this, but when I click this it lies to windows and says hey windows i'm a webcam i'm a usb webcam just like the brio like anything else what you see in these windows it's a webcam and windows goes okay i'll, I'll buy that and so when you go into zoom and i can't show you now because i don't want to show my friends but if i if i went to zoom now oh there's a, co a comment okay i'll I'll, show, I'll I'll answer that in a second if i went to zoom and you know in zoom where, where you could mute your camera it's usually like right here uh, and you could choose your camera. So if I click that, it would show my Brio, it would show my Poly camera, it would show whatever cameras I've connected, and it would show OBS virtual camera as if it was a webcam. I select that, and anyone in Zoom is seeing what's in this box. And anyone in Microsoft Teams or WebEx or anything else that uses a webcam, this pretends to be a webcam. So that's mostly how I use this, the start virtual camera. Um, the second way I can use this is to record. If I click recording, everything in this box and everything that's bouncing on this meter, you can see my mic is bouncing on the meter, gets recorded. And the third is start streaming. And depending on what I have it connected to, if I have it connected to YouTube, if I have it connected to uh, LinkedIn, or, or both through Restream, I click start streaming, it starts going out to that. So that's the three ways, anything within this window and anything bouncing on this audio um, uh, goes out to the, to the world. Um, 
Blair wanted to know how I do the, the, the video where um, Tim and I are on screen together. So really quick, I could show you that. I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna be really sneaky. What I'm going to do, okay. Um, everyone in Zoom, please do not show your videos. I, I, I'm gonna use uh, Blair. Blair, is it okay if I use your, your Zoom image? You know, your non- Sure. Okay. Yeah, you. that's fine. Okay. okay. So what I do is, um, I add my display capture. Display is my monitor. I have um, Blair on my other monitor. So I'm gonna add display capture. And I've, we already created it earlier. So I don't have to recreate it, display three. And here's my zoom window. And what I usually do then is I, I pin the person uh, just for my view. This doesn't affect everyone else in zoom. This is just for me. So I could see Blair. And then remember we have our cropping. Hold on, let me lock, um, lock myself. I crop Blair. This isn't going to be clean. We're going to be fast. <laughs> um, I add uh, the filter um, to get rid of her. Uh, the, the background removal doesn't just work on myself. It works on Blair. She doesn't have a green screen. I don't have to mail. I used to have to mail people green screens to do this. Um, I just do that. There we go. Then I position her so she's sitting next to me. And this is this is going to be a little weird. She's going to have a big head, but you get the idea. Um, try to make it not too weird. Have her peek, have her peeking over this thing. Here we go. And if she was live, you'd see her live. And if I click to the zoom, here she is. So this is how I do the trick with Tim when we're in the boardroom. I have us behind, wink, wink, behind a desk. Uh, I'm capturing him on another window. And, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, that, that answers that question. Let me see if there's... Um, do we have time to go through some of the settings? Maybe really, really, really quickly. Um, cause I, you know, you understand the concept of how to build your window. You understand the concept of, of pushing it out to either a stream recording or the virtual magic fake webcam camera, but there's some settings we still need to get into. Um, so I'm going to click my settings, but, and by the way, I'm happy to do another session. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, let me zoom in and we're just, go, we're just going to go through these quickly because we only have a few more minutes. Um, and a lot of this, I don't even worry about. Um, we were, the theme was important to me. Uh, the show confirmation dialogue when starting and actually when stopping as well. Um, these things, they sort of, when you move things around, when it gets to the edge, it'll snap onto the edge. I like that. I don't worry about this projector stuff. I don't know what any, I don't even, I don't look at any of this stuff. None of this matters to me. Um, multi view, I never use it. Not worried about it. Stream. This is this is key, and it's actually pretty easy for YouTube. It depending on which one you use. Uh, for some of them, um, it's a lot. Like like LinkedIn, I've never tried. I think you might have to put in a code or something. I'm not even sure. It doesn't even look like LinkedIn is directly. You have to do LinkedIn through Restream. But but fortunately, YouTube is very easy. Where is it? Um, you can use a stream key. I don't do that. I click connect account and, and it pops up, it pops up my um, Google account and I just click it and then I'm in. I want, uh, which one, where am I? Did I click the wrong account? Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, you're, that's it. I didn't even have to put in my password or anything. So now I'm connected to YouTube. Um, I'm going to hit okay just so you can see what, what happens here. And now I have the chat as a doc. I don't use this YouTube live control. I don't even, I don't even know what that is, but now I have the chat as a doc. It knows that I'm YouTube. And if I click start streaming, it'll go to YouTube. There's also, I don't want to, this, this we could do another time. You could finish that, figure out yourself, this manage broadcast button. It's connected to YouTube. So you could set up your broadcast within, within here. I usually set up within YouTube and then connect to it from here. Um, so going back to the settings, so that that's the stream. Uh, output. Let's spend a couple, couple. We have a couple minutes on this. Um, my video encoder. I use the NVIDIA H.264. You might want to do a little research. What's best on your computer? Um, audio. I use this 
uh, FM PEG because years ago I did the research and came to the conclusion it was better and I don't remember why, but it works for me, so I'm not going to change it. Uh, I don't, if you want to, you can rescale your output if you're like me, you're doing 1080 and you're like, oof, my niche and I can't handle it. I want to push it out at 720. You can do that here. Um, everything else I kind of leave on default except bit rate. I stream at 6,000. YouTube can handle 6,000. My internet can handle 6,000 and 6,000 can handle 1080p easy. So I, I do bit rate at 6,000. Most of the stuff I leave at default. Um, recording, use stream encoder. So it's just doing one thing. It's doing one encode, it sends it to the internet, it sends it to your stream, and it sends it to the recording. And it's, it's, there's not a lot of work on the, um, uh, on the uh, uh, you know, not as much work on your computer. One thing I do change here, recording format, this MKV thing, I can't, I can't work with that. I change it to MP4. Uh, it gives you a warning that if OBS crashes in the middle, you lose your, lose your recording. Yeah, that's, that's life. I don't care. <laughs> uh, the audio tab, I don't touch. Replay, I don't touch. I know I'm going fast now, but we're running out of time. Um, audio. Okay. One very, very important thing I should have mentioned. I don't use the audio at all when I'm in Zoom. In my Zoom audio settings right now, there's nothing to do with OBS. This microphone is going directly into Zoom. And Zoom is going directly into these earbuds. If I turn off OBS now, it doesn't change anything. I'm not using it. But for streaming and recording, yes, you want to use it. So you could set up your desktop audio. I have crazy settings. Whatever your speakers are, that'll capture whatever sound, if you're playing videos, whatever's coming out. Mic audio. Set to your microphone. Uh, that's pretty basic. Um, and monitoring device. If you're playing videos in OBS that are making noise, for you to hear them, they have to go to your monitoring device. I make that my headphones. Audio is always a little tricky, but it's not too bad. Just set up your microphone, your desktop audio, and the monitoring device. Um, video is pretty easy. Like, like what I said before, I'm set up to build my screen at 1080. I'm pushing out at 720. This downscale filter default is the bicubic. I haven't even bothered to look at what the others are. I just use the default. It's fine. If you want to do 60 FPS, you can here. Um, hotkeys. I don't like them because then I have to remember them, <laughs> but they're super powerful. If, if you don't want to get a stream deck yet, um, and you're really worried that you want to look smoother than clicking on scene to scene to scene here, you want to do it with buttons. You could set up F1 and F2. Scroll down here. Switch to scene. F, if I make it F1, F1 will switch to the main office scene. If I make F2, F2 to switch to presentation left. I don't like using F buttons because they do other things sometimes. Sometimes F buttons change things in the program I'm using. You could tell I'm a little nervous about hotkeys, but they're very powerful and they're here. Um, I don't think I do anything here in advance. This, this looks advanced to me. Um... So I think that is, I think that is OBS uh, 101. Uh, any questions? Really appreciate the time you put into this and the attention to detail. So thank, thank you. you. This is fun. If, and, and if anyone individually has any questions for me, um, please reach out. You could tell I, I enjoy, I enjoy talking about it. <laughs> well, and you make it fun. Thank you. All right. I guess, I guess class dismissed. <laughs> thank, thank you so, so much. much that was Thanks. really awesome. awesome yeah it really was david thank you thanks see you at the next meeting